This video will demonstrate how to create a KML file out of a MicroStation drawing, which then can be used in Google Earth to show the MicroStation geometry that's in this file right here. A couple things that need to be done before we create this KML file. One thing we need to have is Google Earth installed on the machine, that way we can um, read that KML file. And another thing is, we have to have a geographic coordinate system applied to the DGN file. And there is documentation out on the wiki that demonstrates how to create a custom geographic coordinate system for that particular job that is out there. So if you need to do that, you will need to do that beforehand. If you don't do that, it will not land correctly over into Google Earth. So that's two things that need to be done. Okay. Let's go to the tools pull down. And we need to open up the geographic toolbar. So we'll select it. I'm going to go ahead and dock it. You don't necessarily have to, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to double check just to make sure I get a system applied to it. And this one here has my custom geographic coordinate system for this job, which is kind of a modified coordinate system. So I'm good to go there. I'm going to go ahead and close that one down. If I'm ready to take this MicroStation geometry and create it to a KML file, all I would need to do is select this option right here that says export Google Earth KML file. But before we do that, I'm going to go to the second to last icon, which says Google Earth settings, and just check some of the settings that I have checked on or checked off inside here. Um, this top part right here where it says Google Earth version we can leave it set to three we can leave the stroke tolerance the minimum element size transparency override we can leave those set the way they are and also we have some toggles down through here that we can check on or check off depending on how we want this KML file outputted the only ones I'm gonna have checked on is this one that says convert custom line styles because we do have custom line styles here at MODAP so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it checked on that way it converts them and then also I'm going to go ahead and check on this one that says open file after export. That way whenever it creates the KML file, it will open up Google Earth and it will show you where this KML file will land accordingly to the, accordingly to the, to the Google Earth imagery. So, go ahead and click on OK to that. I'll go ahead and select this icon right here that says export Google Earth KML file. And this KML file, you can create it inside or outside of ProjectWise. It doesn't matter. It, it'll read it both ways. So we'll go ahead and leave it set inside ProjectWise. We can leave it set to the, the folder. If you want to change it to some other location, you can do that. But I'm going to leave all this, all these parameters the same. Just make sure the name and the file name, of, of course, are the same, which they are. And if we're ready to go, We'll go ahead and click on save. Now depending on the size of your file that you have, it may take a little bit of time to create this KML file. So be patient while this is being created. This one here wasn't too big so it's going to go pretty fast. And now you'll see that you have this KML file attached to the sheet. And you can tell that by this, this over here where it says temporary places. We have it attached. We can use our mouse to zoom in or zoom out. We can pan along through here. And this one here looks like it fell pretty good. Looks like it's lined up with a geometry that's out there. You can kind of see that. So, very simple. That's how you, you can create a KML file out of a MicroStation drawing. If we go back into MicroStation, there are some options or some tools up above here that you can utilize also. Um, you do have this one that says Capture Google Earth Image, image which that allows you to create in, or um, capture in the Google Earth image and bring it over to MicroStation, but that's a 3D tool. So we're not going to talk about that. Um, you have the one that says define place marker monument. We're not going to talk about that one either. 
But the two that I want to talk about are these two right here. The one that says synchronize Google Earth View and follow Google Earth View. Let's say you're in MicroStation and you're zoomed into a certain area. I'll just kind of zoom into an area. Say right around say right around this intersection. I'm zoomed into that area. But I want my Google Earth imagery to be exactly what my MicroStation view is right here. All we'd have to do is select this option here right right here that says synchronize Google Earth view. Select it. And now if we go back into Google Earth, it'll synchronize with the MicroStation view. Or we could do vice versa. Let's say we're zoomed into an area. Let's say say this area right here in Google, or in Google Earth. And we want to synchronize this view over into our MicroStation view. We can do that. We go back into MicroStation and we just use the other option right here that says follow Google Earth view. Select it. Brings you to that view of the Google Earth view. Not quite zoomed in to what it is, but pretty close. That's how you create a KML file out of a MicroStation drawing and also some of the tools that are inside here after you create the KML file. Let's go back over into the Google Earth application and you'll notice inside here that we have the geometry from the KML file. We got the KML file that's located right here underneath the temporary places but also to the side here we have levels. Whenever it creates this KML file all the geometry that is on here got brought over with its associated levels. So you could actually turn off or turn on levels inside this KML file. Let's say we want to turn off level, let's just say 20 and maybe 24. You'll see that it turns off those levels for the geometry that they're associated to. Level 24 had some guardrail on it. If we want to turn it off or on, you could do that. And you can do the same thing for like level 20 or any other level that's on there. If the DGN file had reference files attached to it, you'd be able to do the same thing where you could turn off or turn on reference files inside this KML file. Another thing about the KML file it is it's just a separate file that anyone can use. So let's say a property owner wants to see what's going through their project and they did not have any CAD application on their machine or on their PC, you could actually send them this KML file and if they have Google Earth installed on their machine they would be able to open it up by doing a file open open up that KML file and it would bring it to that location and they would be able to see kind of where their alignment is going through their property or how it could affect them or you could do the same thing for like some public officials if they want to see what's going on through a certain section you could send them that KML file and they would be able to do exactly what we're doing right here where we're zooming in zooming out panning turn off and on levels and so forth one thing to remember is we stored this KML file in ProjectWise, so if you're wanting to send it to someone, you'd have have to check this file back in since it's, since it's checked out right now, and then export this file out of ProjectWise to a certain location, and then you can send it to that person through an email or some other means. So.